Hi everyone, I'm here today with some extra special training for you. I think this is going to be a really helpful session for you guys because we're going to actually look for a meal plan and pick out why I've chosen particular ingredients. So you can start to learn about how different foods actually impact your hormones and common underlying imbalances that can make it difficult to lose weight. So some of you might be familiar with this. It does look very similar to um, the Belly Be Gone Cheat Sheet, which many of you have downloaded, but this is actually something different. This is the seven day plan to curb cravings. And this is actually something I was giving out before I created the Belly Be Gone Cheat Sheet. Um, it is a meal plan with some guidance and it was really, really popular. Uh, the reason why I decided to stop giving it out as my freebie was because I was a little bit worried that I was kind of giving off the message that a meal plan is the solution to the problem. I want to make it clear that a meal plan is not the solution. It's definitely helpful, um, you know, having that framework and seeing what a normal healthy diet looks like. Yeah, that's really a helpful place to start. But there's more to it than that and it needs to be individualized so that you actually address your specific underlying imbalances so i just want to make that clear that this is not the whole solution but i think you're going to find this really helpful so i'm going to give you guys this link to this meal plan as i said it was so popular so i think you guys are going to love it um but what i'm going to do today is talk you through it so you can actually understand it and understand why I've told you to eat these foods. So we start off with a little bit about me. You can read that in your own time. And then we also start off with the fundamentals, a couple of basic principles that I want you guys to understand. Again, you can read that in your own time. And then we also got our non-negotiables. So this is giving you a little bit of background as to what I've chosen or why I've chosen the particular foods in this meal plan. But I'm gonna go into some more detail today by talking you through the individual meals. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this so that you can see properly. So I'm gonna start off with breakfast on Monday. So this breakfast is actually a really popular one and really the key constituent of it is egg. So eggs are a great breakfast option. They are a complete food. They're not just a complete protein, but they're actually a complete food as well because they're so rich in nutrients. And if you think about it, an egg is what is needed for a life to start. You know, it's got all of the nutrients in there for cells to be able to uh, thrive. So that is super, super nutritious. So eggs are a great option. You don't have to worry about overdoing the eggs because all that stuff about eggs and cholesterol is a complete myth. So eggs for breakfast, great option. But what we want to do is combine it with some fiber because eggs, you know, they combine you up a little bit. So what we've got here is um, bell pepper egg cups plus some blackberries. You could swap this about depending on your preferences. So the key thing here is the eggs rather than the, the fruit and veg itself. But it's important that you do have the fruit and veg there to give you that fiber boost. So that's a great breakfast to start the day. You might not want to have eggs every single day and I've included some other options in here. Um, but it's, a, it's fine to have it every day if you want to. So then the next one that we're going to look at is this one here, I'm not going to go through every single meal because it would be for ages, but I just thought I'd pick out a few things. So snack number two on Monday. So we've got celery with sunflower seed butter. So the reason why we've chosen this is because one, it is rich in fat. Fat is very slowly digested and it doesn't influence your blood sugar levels. So it fills you up without making your blood sugar spike and that means that you're, it's not pushing you into um, fat storage mode. So having a fat rich snack or a protein rich snack is the way to go if you're gonna have a snack. Again, we've paired it with um, some fiber so that you're, you're keeping things moving. Again, you can swap these out. You now celery has many, many benefits 
um, but if you want to swap it for something else, then you could. Uh, if you want to swap the sunflower seed butter for something like almond butter, that would be fine too. Um, the next one that we've got is, I couldn't read my own writing then, um, this one here. So we've got snack number one, which is Brazil nuts. So nice and simple. The reason why I've included Brazil nuts as a snack is because Brazils are an amazing source of selenium. Selenium is something that's very supportive of thyroid function. So if you suspect any thyroid issues or you know you've got thyroid issues, then it's very helpful to have Brazil nuts in your diet. Now, you don't want to overdo them. Um, they can contain trace amounts of a heavy metal called barium. And it's a little bit like the fish situation. You've probably heard that you shouldn't overdo the fish because you might take in too much mercury. So this is an accumulative thing. So over the course of your life, if you ate Brazil nuts every day um, and you had a lot of them every day, then you could build up a toxic amount of barium. So instead, the best thing to do is limit your intake to, well, really you don't need any more than four Brazil nuts to get your recommended daily intake. So I would suggest keeping it at somewhere between two and four Brazil nuts per day as a snack. They're quite rich in fat, so they should fill you up. So the next thing <clears throat> is the dinner on day two. So what we've got here is some vegetables and fish. Sounds pretty basic, but let's have a think about the ingredients that we've included and why. So salmon. Salmon is rich in omega-3s, and omega-3 is a type of fat that's really, really important for hormone balance. It's also very anti-inflammatory. It's been shown to benefit heart health, joint health, you name it really, it's been shown to help. So having oily fish is very important or taking a fish oil supplement instead. Um, so the salmon here is ideally wild because it will be higher in omega-3s. If you don't like salmon, you could switch out for mackerel or trout or herring. So any of those oily fish would be fine to have. So we've also got in this dinner some broccoli. You can't really see it very well from the description, but there is some broccoli in there. Part of the reason for that is because broccoli is one of the cruciferous vegetables. Now, cruciferous vegetables are rich in sulfur. They also have something in them called indole-free carbonyl. And these are both things that are very helpful in supporting the elimination or the de detoxification of estrogens. And a problem that many women have when they struggle to lose weight is that they're not, um, that genetically, they're not programmed to detox estrogen very efficiently. And you can end up with some of your estrogens being reactivated and recirculated around your system, causing estrogen dominance. So things like cruciferous vegetables, which includes your broccoli, is a great thing to have in your diet ideally every day, some sort of portion of them every day. So that is the place to start, is having broccoli um, with, with your dinner regularly will help to boost those levels of the, uh, the I3, I3C, yes, I3C, um, and the sulfur, which is gonna help with detoxification. Um, okay, so the next one that we're gonna look at is the next breakfast. So smoked salmon and avocado. So this is a nice fat rich breakfast. Again, good fats, and these are fats that are gonna keep you full up. So we've spoken about the salmon. Salmon is a good source of omega-3, but also protein. Avocado is a fantastic source of monounsaturated fats. These are fats that are really, really helpful for hormone balance, for heart health, all of the things that I've mentioned when I was talking about the salmon, basically. So again, if you don't like salmon or avocado, you can switch things out. You can have one of the other breakfasts. You don't have to have these things in your diet, but if you can, they're really helpful. And the next thing and the last thing that we're gonna cover is we have got for dinner on the Wednesday, we have got, oh no, I'm looking at the wrong one. Where, what am I looking at? Uh, this one. Uh, no, this one, here we go, sorry. So this is um, 
a breakfast, a kind of a bit of a cooked breakfast. And in here we've got kale and cauliflower. These are more types of cruciferous vegetables. So I mentioned that the broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable, which means it's got these very helpful constituents to help you detox your estrogens. Well, cauliflower and kale are also in that family, as are radishes here. Um, Brussels sprouts are as well. I'm trying to remember if we've got any Brussels sprouts anywhere in here, but you could swap them out for something. Um, they're the main things in the cruciferous vegetable family. So in this breakfast, you're getting a portion of them in here. Um, so th th it's in most days in this meal plan is some sort of cruciferous vegetables because they're so amazing for helping you to detox your estrogens. Um, and really, these are the key things. I'm not going to go into too much more detail because I don't want to overwhelm you. But basically, get some cruciferous vegetables into your diet. Get plenty of good fats such as omega-3s and avocado. Olives is another good option. Um, and really, that is the best place to start, is to, to make sure you've got those elements in place that's going to start to keep you full up for longer and also help to start to balance your blood sugars and your hormones as well. So the way that this meal plan goes on is, let's zoom out, as you scroll down, you'll see there's a shopping list. That's helpful if you're going to follow the meal plan exactly as it is. And then you've got each recipe laid out. Some of them aren't actually recipes, they're just, you know, blackberries, but um, they're, that's just the way that the software works. So you've got all the recipes laid out as you need them. And some of them have notes about what to do if you want to swap food or what to do with leftovers, how to change it up a little bit. Um, sometimes how to store the food, what to do if you want a bit more carbohydrate. So these recipes are adaptable to your needs, basically. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me know what you think. Let me know whether this has been helpful for you, whether you've got any questions at all. Let me know what you're struggling with and I'll be here to help. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm gonna be doing a training like this every month. So it's gonna be on something different next time, but I'm doing one of these sort of deep dives into a topic each month so this time next month i'll be back with your next training so thanks again for tuning in and i'll see you next time bye